सभी साधकों का सुबह के ध्यान सत्र में हार्दिक स्वागत है चित्त सहस्त्र आर पे रख के सामूहिक बंधन लेते हैं ध्यान की शुरुआत तीन महामंत्र तत्पश्चात श्री गणेश मंत्र से करते हैं
परम पूज्य श्री माता जी कृपावंत होकर आप हमारे सहस्रार पर विराजी है श्री माता जी कृपा कर हमारा आत्म साक्षात्कार दृढ़ कीजिए श्री माता जी हम सब अपना अहंकार और प्रति अहंकार आपके श्री चरणों पर समर्पित करते हैं कृपावंत होकर आप हमें निर्विचारिता प्रदान कीजिए जय श्री माता जी इसी ध्यान की अवस्था में अमृतवाणी ग्रहण करते हैं टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू वर्शिप द गॉड इज दस द फर्स्ट द लेफ्ट साइड प्रोग्रामिंग इज विथ हॉर But later on, at Sastara, she is the Adi Shakti. And on the left side, whatever she does is already written, as you must have seen. Because she is the memory, and that <coughs> she is the wisdom. And that she protects. is uh, shown when she uses her power over the ganas there are ganas that are as we know responsible for all kinds of corrections in these are the ganas which act through the left side 
as we know very well that cancer is caused by the problems of the left side and on the left side are these ganas which are completely in union with the devi's powers she doesn't have to tell them she doesn't have to guide them they are already built up like that. and these ganas are the ones which die, which i should say target they target the disease and cure you we have cured many cancer patients and many left sided people through the ganas but ganas won't listen to anybody else and ganapati is their leader i should say their controlling so if your ganapati is all right then problems are less but if the ganapati is not all right then all kinds of problems can come up and they can torture this is one of the thing i am so particular about that we must get our ganesha correct the other day i received a big envelope with letter saying that mother difficult to control ganas but difficult to control ganapati itself so what should we do we get into traumas a simple thing is at such a point when you are in a trauma and when you cannot overcome this defect of the ganapati then what you should do is to meditate meditation is the only way you can overcome ganas the first of all is the upbringing of the children and then atmosphere as it exists with these two important factors you can do well with the ganas but the problem is that human beings get lost and they don't look after their ganapati so as you worship the goddess you are also worshiping shri ganesha who is the power behind her but the greatest power that is belonging to the mother is your protection protection from all kinds of things all the left hand side protections are there they are described as you must have learned on the devi mahatme what are protections she gives so tremendous in her protecting power and this protecting power gives you understanding how kind she is and how i should say how very very protective of you extremely protective she'll guide you all the time that you should be protected on the left side and through her ganas she looks after you but on the right side also those who are on the right side the goddess puts her powers to put you right to bring you back to normal conditions to humble you down and make you understand that you are a child of the mother and you have to behave like a child 
but if you go to extremes then you develop all kinds of complications of the right side also as you develop on the left side and the right side problems these days are very very common which i have seen people cannot get over so many diseases like alzheimer and other diseases come up later on first it starts with the liver the liver is the main point as we fall at, into the trap of the liver if you are thinking too much if you are futuristic if you are aggressive then the liver goes out because you use liver's power to do all that and when your liver power is over you are finished with liver power you can develop so many diseases so many troubles that you cannot overcome it it's very difficult of course with sir yoga so many people's liver has been cured so many people and it has been uh, doing wonderful work as far as the liver is concerned but one should humble down and try to keep the liver all right so the protection is also built in your body by ganas on the left hand side and by reactions on the right hand side but the greatest thing is the blessings of the mother the way she looks after you the way she loves you and the way she cares for you which you should never take it for granted you must meditate you must meditate is very important no question without meditation you can keep yourself all right is no question meditation is the most important thing which must be followed because that's how you come close to her vibrations come to her i should say to her nature even animals are so sensitive to mother very sensitive to vibration animals are but human beings have their own understanding have their own freedom have their <laughs> so called intelligence and they follow trap to it they follow things which they should not have. so what is necessary very much in the country like america is the devotion and bhakti these two things are not there indians take to sahaj yoga and go deep down it because they know what is bhakti what is devotion all the ego and all that melts away but this bhakti is to be enjoyed i don't know how to create bhakti within that i can't say but i have seen people with bhakti they have achieved great heights so it's a left side movement with the left side movement they have achieved great heights i don't know how the bhakti and shraddha has helped them so much in this i must say indians are the best because they have this power of bhakti and of shraddha it's not madness it's not madness as they have here i've seen people who get into some sort of a cult or something they go mad it's not madness bhakti is love and love which is understanding which understands what is bhakti is and shraddha unless and until you develop that bhakti and shraddha within you you cannot rise you cannot rise above your problems you cannot rise about your personality because <coughs> bhakti is something you cannot impose on anyone you cannot force on anybody ha uh, you can make somebody mad and say that he can do bhakti he can 
you have to have all your qualities absolutely intact you should be intelligent you should be understanding everything should be there but at that time this the joy of bhakti is with it and this joy of bhakti when it starts flowing god is herself enters into your being i should say i have seen people bhaktas many great saints in india who achieved lot of heights they gone too far into it and if you read about them and if you understand them you are amazed how without any help without any guidance how could they go that deep and worship devi worshiping is not just out of sheer reading or some sort of a chanting or anything what's the deep attention of your heart i think it's spirit if the spirit is awakened within you you develop the bhakti and drop out all nonsensical ideas all different things that have crawled into your head but you just develop the bhakti now all these qualities described of the devi are left sided are in the brain memory smriti rupena samstita other things also whatever are described are in the brain and then the bhakti reaches the state it just neutralizes everything all the problems of the brain are neutralized and you become a wise person so the greatest boon of the devi is to give you wisdom you can call it awareness you can call it anything there's a kind of a wisdom by which you become absolutely a divine personality that wisdom you must teach through your bhakti but you see we have people of all kinds some are very much in the shraddha in the bhakti in the devotion but they are wrongly placed and they don't understand to whom we should worship and where we should go now sahaja yoga is a actualization sahaja yoga is a sakshat is actualization in which you know whom to worship and whom to surrender it's not blind in any way whatever is blind bhakti can take you to any kind of nonsense and that's how many cults have come up many these things have come up but that's not a thing that sees that knows that understand it should be understood by your intelligence by all by all your qualities what is your bhakti is like now we have through kundalini awakening reached a very great height i must say of understanding of bhakti the power of bhakti the greatest power of bhakti is that it protects you it protects you those people who are suffering from any kind of trouble any kind of uh, problems just get out of it because this bhakti of yours gives you the right type of understanding the understanding of yourself also the understanding of surroundings understanding of the whole uh, universe i should say why people behave like this why they are like this all this can be solved through your bhakti it should not be blind it should not be blind but it should be wise bhakti wise with wisdom only possible through sahaja yoga i think otherwise whatever bhakti people do like mad that cannot be bhakti you don't become mad you become a wise man wise man as we have so many in the past and the way they have talked about everything is surprising how they have said things 
about human awareness, about your ascent, is remarkable. As I, sometimes I feel they have really prepared a field for me, a proper area for me to talk to people. Especially in India, I don't know why traditionally we are very, traditionally we are very much devoted people. In the same way all over it should happen because in India of course there are mad people also, there are cults, there are all kinds of things, no doubt. But actually they, we have saints who have guided us very well. Despite that you find in India people are going astray, doing wrong things and wrong type of worship. This is true, no doubt. But it is, I should say, just the white. It's a funny type of a madness where there is no wisdom. What is between a mad and a sane person is that mad person has no wisdom. And those who have also so-called wisdom should say that we are very wise are sadly mistaken. Because the way they behave, the way they commit mistakes, the way their whole attention is, I should say the whole working is sometimes surprising, but because they have no wisdom. First of all is to test yourself, you must see, am I wise? Am I wise? Do I doing wise things or I am not doing them? So many complaints come to me about Sahaja Yogi's I am surprised, why? Why are they doing like that? I would say still, they have not reached the state of bhakti. Bhakti and Shraddha, these two things are missing in the Western life, I must say. We should come back, we should develop, we should grow. But even in the Eastern life now, it's missing. For them the ideal is now the Western life. Once you take to Western life, that part is over because the whole thing is judged with ideas what is beneficial, what is helpful in life. But bhakti and shraddha, according to them, is of no use. That doesn't help. Most of the people nowadays think like that. But you are very few who have understood what is bhakti and what is shraddha. So I would say the goddess gives you bhakti and shraddha. By what? She gives you through your meditation that you see so many miracles happening in your life. And you are amazed how this has happened. We never expected this to happen, how it has happened, how it has worked out. Also she corrects you. All the time, you, if you are aware, she corrects you and tells you, don't go this way. You are going on the ego side. Or she'll tell you, you are going on the left side. She's the one who corrects throughout. We get into diseases and all kinds of, we are trapped into all kinds of things. It is because, because we don't have bhakti. In the bhakti you have to depend on the wisdom of the mother. Wisdom of the shakti, that she looks after you, she finds you out the way and she will help you. If you start becoming on your own and thinking that I am all right, I can do this, I can do that, you will find inevitably that you are wrong. That you have a very wrong idea about yourself and about the divine. So what is the most important point is surrender. The word Islam means surrender. But Muhammad Sahib has described what you should have before surrender is your realization. But you have seen after after realization, people take time to settle down. But once you are settled down, you understand that you are under a protection of the Goddess, that you see every day how it works and how it helps you. Many people who are in Sahaja Yoga so-called 
have great respect for me, but are not fully there, then they suffer and they have problems. And then they ask me, Mother, how is it I have got this problem? I don't tell them. Because you can't tell anything to human beings, you see, they are very aggressive. But the fact is, because, because you are not one with the Divine. And with the Divine, if you are one, you will have nothing but compassion and love, nothing else. And everything you will do so smoothly, so nicely, people may not understand. Like they crucified Christ, they did all kinds of things, agreed. But now you should ask for the protection of the Goddess, because that is the greatest quality of the Goddess, that she protects you from all problems, from all troubles, from all kinds of nonsensical, uh, I should say, things that can happen to you. And there are so many things that happen. I tell you, I was told that one of the leaders of Sahaja Yogi was killed. I said, not possible. And the fellow was in uh, Rome. He was not killed. So, it's not possible that a young man should be killed like that. Of course, somebody is old, you have to die. But that he was killed was not the right thing. So it is the protection, not only physical, mental, emotional, but spiritual protection comes to you. Spiritual protection in that what you do is that you don't do wrong things. You don't kill anybody, you don't torture anybody, you are not rude to anybody. That is the situation into which you all can enter, because you are such a peace. You can achieve it, you have a power to do it, because you have so much Shraddha and so much uh, understanding that you have reached a certain state of protection, of growth, of wisdom. Now first test your wisdom. You must test your wisdom. If I am doing this, is this wise? Is it good? Why I am doing it? First test your wisdom. Then you will find out that many things you do which are wrong, which should not have been done. But first your wisdom must develop and you must see that your wisdom works and helps. I have seen now yesterday's drama, you must have seen that girl. She is very sensitive and she could see through her wisdom what was good. If you cannot find out what is good and what is bad, if that means the wisdom is lacking. If you cannot find out what should you do, then the wisdom is lacking. But if you have the wisdom, then you will immediately know that this is wrong. Apart from that, you will be saved from all kinds of problems. It's a fact I have seen with so many people like that, who have been saved not only from death, but from all kinds of catastrophes, all kinds. And uh, <coughs> I was amazed how these Sahaja Yogis are helped by the Divine. Divine is a power, everywhere it exists, but it will only help the people who are Sahaja Yogis, who are Divine, not the people who are not. It will never help. On the contrary, it might punish in a way that is never expected. So one has to be careful to test oneself, what I call introspection. Have you been wise in dealing with certain problems? What has been your style? Is it money-oriented or it is domination-oriented? What sort of a power it was that you were, wonder, you were working under? You have to introspect to find out and you will be amazed very much amazed that even in the name of God you can do wrong things. Lots of wrong things have been done in the name of God and that's why today we have such a big chaos of so-called religions, where nothing wrong was religion, was with the religion as such and those religious people who talked about it, nothing wrong. But the way people absorbed it and the way people used it was wrong because they lacked his wisdom. And the wisdom is the 
thing which really is not just assumption that I am very wise and all that, but it asserts, it works out and it shows what is good and what is bad. Wisdom is the sign of a person who is really a realized soul of a very high level. If you don't have wisdom, whatever you day may do, you might feel satisfied about it. But the wisdom part is very, very important. That is the most governing part within us. And as you know, Ganesha <coughs> is the giver of wisdom. That's why Ganesha must be worshipped. The proper upbringing <coughs> with Sri Ganesha is established, who is nothing but the giver of wisdom. <coughs> and this wisdom is innate. You don't have to judge it, it's innate within us, grown up, just like any other qualities in us. It takes time with some people. <coughs> it takes time, no doubt. But once it comes in, such a person becomes quiet, simple, and absolutely truthful. He knows about him. And this is the thing one should develop is, how far am I wise? You see in this world people are protesting for this, protesting for that, fighting for this, doing all kinds of things. But if you have wisdom, then you don't have to do anything of the kind. What happens that automatically people understand that he is a wise man. From ancient times everywhere a wise man has been praised. He is not worried about his financial side or emotional side, nothing. What he is worried, have I been a wise person? That is the first sign of the blessings of God. The one who has blessings of divine is a wise person. He is very wise and his wisdom is shown by his silence. And the whole power, the divine power, uses that person as a media and works tremendously. That man himself is surprised how it has helped him. A woman can have that, a man can have it. Anybody can have that wisdom, that profoundness, that temperament, which is so beautiful and so empowering. Such a person doesn't curse anyone, doesn't bother to curse anyone, but it works. He never gets angry with anyone, but it works. <coughs> he doesn't lose temper, no, but some temper works and harm you, which you never expected. It is within us, within our power as human beings to be wise. I have seen animals have such a sensitivity to vibrations, extremely sensitive. How? Because their wisdom is intact. It works in them, they are not conscious of it. The difference is human beings are conscious of their wisdom. This is the only difference. Animals have wisdom, but automatic, we should say natural. But we have inculcated this, or we have developed this wisdom within us, through what? Through our meditation, through our understanding bhakti and shraddha. <coughs> so it's very important to understand the value of bhakti within us. You cannot superficially touch it. Those who are superficial will never get it. 
Wisdom only comes through understanding what is wisdom is. You might find somebody extremely wise, maybe your servant, maybe your driver, maybe anyone, <coughs> and you are amazed how such a person can be so wise. Because maybe from his last life he has got it within him or he has gone into it and he found it. It's not the state of one person, it's not the property of one person, but it can belong to many of them. So the Sahaja Yogi is the one who has to have that wisdom. Why I am doing this? What is the need to do it? They don't have to ask any questions, they just don't do wrong things. They just don't do wrong things. They are always on the right path. That is the sign of Sahaja Yogi, I believe, and which is the blessing of the Goddess. If there is the power of the Goddess working in you, you will have the wisdom to work it out. Now you have seen many people coming to America doing all kinds of things. They all have disappeared. There is no support to them. Where are they? They are finished because they were money-oriented or power-oriented, I don't know what they were oriented, and they have lost it. But for a person who is standing in his wisdom, is the sage, as they call him, is the saint, as they call it. But this can be… every Sahaja Yogi could be a saint, could be a sage, every Sahaja Yogi could be that. But if you lose your wisdom, then you are no good. So I have to tell you one thing, it's your wisdom which will save you. Your wisdom will unconsciously help you. There was one gentleman, Sir Yogi, once he was going somewhere in the car and suddenly he decided to go on to another road, suddenly. And what happened? that on that road there was a very big accident and he would have been in that accident. <coughs> like that there are many incidents people have told me, Ki Mother, how we were saved, how we were brought to the brink of death and then how we are just alive. It is because the <laughs> Divine needs you, Divine doesn't want you to die, or to finish off, it needs you very much. It has to do its work and you are the instrument of that Divine. <coughs> if you have wisdom, you are the best instrument for the Divine to work it out. The Devi's powers, first of all, existed in her body only. And she killed so many Rakshasas and evil people. She did kill it, actually. But now there's no need because you all are there, you are the instruments and it will all work out in such a way that all those people who are trying to destroy goodness, trying to dis destroy wise people, they will be killed, they'll be finished, they'll be destroyed. This is not to be done through any outside instrument or anything. It's your wisdom, it's the biggest instrument that will work it out. Do you know, when I came to America first, I saw such a horrible thing here that people were running after some horrible gurus and I, I never came after nine years I came. Because I said, these people are mad. How do they follow these horrible people? And why do they believe in to? They have no wisdom to understand what is the truth is like. It works out now, today, you can see there are so many people here. So that is what is the wisdom part. And if this wisdom comes to Americans, they'll come to Sahaja Not only come, but they will grow into it. But the wisdom will be to see what are we going to do, what are we going to get, what is our aim. All these things must be brought to them, which is not done normally. We must talk to them and we must tell them if what is within you is the spirit. You should become the spirit. Every one of them has said so. 
So why not do that? And why not become the spirit? So they will, they will themselves feel, yes, that's true. She said that you should become the spirit. They'll go to church, they'll go to temples, they'll go here, there, so, not understanding why they are doing it. They need some sort of a protection, that's why they go. But this protection comes from your spiritual status. Where do you find in, as far as spirit is concerned? Those who have enjoyed the spirit, I've seen, do not deviate from the right path. But those who haven't, they may call themselves surgeries, anything, but they can be very wrong. So first of all, find out about yourself. If you are a real sajogi, if you really want to be a instrument of this power, then what you have to do is to become full of bhakti and shraddha for that. And this bhakti and shraddha is very joy-giving, I know. <coughs> it never makes you tired, it never troubles you, nothing. But it's very nourishing and beautiful. But it should be at the right place, with the right aims and right understanding. For all that, what you need again is wisdom. And you should try to find out, are you wise enough? Are you wise or are you not? It's very difficult for every human being to find out whether you are right or wrong because you see the effects of this wisdom all around. So the bhakti and sraddha to the goddess gives you, definitely gives you wisdom. We have had some people in India who did lots of bhakti, so-called, and showed lots of sraddha, but they were not. They were not. Just they were talking about it or doing all kinds of things about it, but they were not. So wisdom is something, a very innate quality, very innate. It's not superficial. You cannot just say that this person is wise or not. It shows that just like a power, it's a power of understanding and is supported by the power of the Goddess. So she's the giver of wisdom. This is the biggest quality of the body, that she is the giver of wisdom. And wisdom comes as a part of the evolutionary process. Now she has brought about all the evolution so far and to go further she is going to make you a very wise person. Even an ordinary sage in a village, in a far-fetched places is respected, if he is a real sage. But he was a stupid fellow, what can you do? You may, he may be fool, you may do all kinds of tricks and things like that. And then does he get, does he get anything good for you? No, nothing. So first thing is anybody who is supposed to be your guru or supposed to be the person who is guiding you must have bhakti. Bhakti of the Goddess, very important to understand. Modern things have such come to such an a limit that they have no respect for the goddess, no? They don't even talk about the goddess. And they just talk about something <coughs> which cannot be explained and understood. If they talk about Christ, they won't talk about him, that he is the said, he is the one who said at the cross, Behold the mother. What was the need to say that? Because he didn't want his mother to get into trouble. But he said, behold the mother. That means look out for the mother who is going to come. They all have indicated and they have said so, but still we are busy with our own ego and our own understanding and we run after things which are not real. First of all, you must follow only thing that is real, not unreal things. For that also again you need to stop. I think for that you need wisdom very much more. And that is something, whether you have the wisdom first or you have the blessings of the mother, it's between the two. So I have to tell you one thing that <coughs> before, 
you people start spreading Sahaja Yoga, please judge yourself. Just see if you are wise enough. Also see for yourself if you have the blessings of the Buddha. Only the wise are, are the, I mean I should say, are the people who know whether they have the mother's blessings or not. For that, we have so many ways of understanding. First and foremost thing is meditation and feeling your vibrations on the footpath and facing yourself clearly. If you are a realized soul, are you a really a good realized soul or not? Are you deep or not? Are your vibrations working out or not? If you can see that, then you will realize that greater than all ambitions, the greatest is to become a devoted, wise personality. That is the one that will give you the joy, joy for all kinds of things. Otherwise, see, it is just a human being like others going about. Now the time has come for this to work out. It's a special time, I should say, although quite a lot of struggle for me, no doubt. But doesn't matter, I know, because I've landed myself in the area where things are not so simple, it doesn't matter. But on the whole, what I feel is, you can support me very much. You can support my work very much if you have that wisdom. And the wisdom is to judge yourself. How many people you love, how you love, how you talk to them, what do you want out of them, all this should come. Judge yourself, introspection. Through introspection you can see it. So for a Sahaja Yogi is important is introspection. Second one is meditation. And third one is to take vibrations. It's very important, what I find, some of them say, Mother, we don't do this, we don't do that. But why? Why not do it? We do Sahaja Yoga. Sahaja Yoga means what? If you are not doing these basic things, how are you a Sahaja Yoga? And then lots of complications come out of them. They also suffer. Um, I think one has to have again the wisdom to understand what is Sahaja Yoga. No one understands that sometimes. And <clears throat> they go on forming a group of people who are not at all understanding what is surgery. It's a very, very deep personality. Sajoga is not just by saying, I am a surgery, but it's a very deep personality. And that deep personality has to be felt by others as the wise, very wise thing. Not that how much you talk or shout or give lectures is important. Is the peace, the tranquility, the capacity to love within you are important. And that's how people can judge whether you are really blessed by your mother or not. So this is one of the things very important and I've come to America just to protect America from problems. Because suddenly this has grown into problems. And it was inevitable. Because they were blind here not to understand what's going wrong with them. And that blindness has brought them to this point that they start seeing their ego especially, which has ruined them. Money orientation. All this has shown how stupid they have been to believe that they are very rich people and they can do anything they want to with their money and with the uh, overpowering of other countries and other people. First overpower yourself. You have to know yourself first of all. What is overpowering others? Those who do not know how to overpower themselves are always miserable always in trouble because it reacts. If you try to overpower others, it reacts. For that you have to be 
absolutely introspecting again and again I have been saying this, that introspect. Of course, I must say, so many good Sahaja Yogis have come out now and they have worked it out and they are very good, simple, wise people. It's such a great hope for me. I never expected I will work it out that good, but it has worked out and always, always you must know you have that power within you and they must use that power and not fall a prey into nonsensical idea. Thank you very much. जय श्री माता जी अपना चित्त सहस्रार पे रखें प्रार्थना अर्पित करते हैं परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आज का ध्यान हम सब आपके श्री चरणों पर समर्पित करते हैं श्री माता जी आपने हमें आत्म साक्षात कर दिया परम चैतन्य से आशीर्वादित किया हमारा चित्त सहस्रार में स्थित किया इन सब के लिए हम हृदय से आपके ऋणी हैं आभारी हैं श्री माता जी आपकी कृपा में हम हमारा अहंकार और प्रति अहंकार आपके श्री चरणों में समर्पित करते हैं श्री माता जी आप ही करता करविता और भोक्ता है हम तो केवल निमित्त मात्र है श्री माता जी कृपा कर आप हमारे अंदर आध्यात्मिक परिवर्तन घटित कीजिए हमें स्वयं की पहचान दीजिए श्री माता जी कृपा कर आप हमें निर्विकल्प स्थिति प्रदान कीजिए हमारा उत्थान निर्विकल्प स्थिति में कीजिए श्री माता जी कृपा कर आप हमें विश्व निर्मल धर्म में प्रस्तापित कीजिए श्री माता जी हमारे सारे प्रार्थनाओं को स्वीकार कीजिए और हमें आशीर्वादित करने की कृपा कीजिए परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आपके श्री चरणों पर हमारा कोटि कोटि नमन कोटि कोटि नमन अनंत कोटि नमन जय श्री माता जी सामूहिक बंधन लेते हैं
आज का ध्यान सत्र यहीं पे संपन्न होता है जय श्री माता जी